you may be, however you may be tuned in here on ESPN Plus and on the ESPN app. Ian Williams will kick it off for Furman. And the approach, and away we go. Underway here in Greenville, and that'll be a touchback into the end zone. And ETSU will have the opening possession of the game, first and 10 at its own 25. Time now for our keys to the game. It's brought to you by BMW. What do you have today, Cole? Well, one for ETSU. You got to finish each series with something, okay? You got to leave here with something. This is exactly what Jamie Foxx said. All right, you got to take something out of this, okay? So offense, you want to end this drive with a kick. You want to get at least three points. If you can get an extra point out of this drive, great. Same thing on defense. Finish those drives for Furman. Hey, you got to have some explosive plays. Get back there. Have a tackle for loss. Generate a sack. When they get on offense, let's get some deep balls getting thrown in the air right here and have some explosive runs. And the handoff, Bryson Irby off left tackle. Not much there. Gains one up to the 26-yard line. Gain of one brings up second down and nine. The quarterback for ETSU is number 14, William Riddle, a fifth-string quarterback and a walk-on as well. Well, not only that, too, I mean, he won two state championships that are in Macaulay High School in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So he's a he has some talent, and it's just going to be a matter of how can he carry this ETSU offense today. They say a gain of two, so second down and eight. Another running play for ETSU, and not much there. It gains a few. Up to the 29-yard line, brings up third down. Let's take a look at the Bon Secours starting lineups and the Bucks on offense. You see Riddle, the quarterback. Irby, the running back, the tight end, Jawan Martin. Receivers, Mathis, Geyerdetz, and Winton. And you see the offensive line as well for ETSU, which is 2-5 and five in the year, 1-3 and three in SoCon play. And coming off a tough 34-3 loss at Chattanooga last week in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Third down and six for the Bucks at their own 29. And Riddle to throw over the middle, passes, intercepted by Furman. Cam Brinson has it. Brinson inside the 20, inside the 10. He'll go into the end zone. Touchdown, Furman. Cam Brinson with the pick six. And for Brinson, his first interception of the season. We'll talk about a key to the game right there, Brock. There it is, an explosive play by the Paladin defense. See, so watch this when we get to the replay here. You're going to see it actually had a guy open just a bad pass and right there cam brinson just sees it stays locked in onto it and makes a guy miss right here watch the juke is coming up and whoa right there and here we go for another look great pass rush right here generating some pressure you want to be able to do that all game that's something that coach bond said he wanted to do he wants to bring that pressure he wants to make that that quarterback uncomfortable and force him to throw the ball and have some foul balls that result in, in some interceptions Review. So it's going to go under the monitor review and Cole I think Cam Brinson's knee was down when he made the interception So that's down by contact right there. This touchdown may be taken off the board either way That's still a great way to start off the, you know the game and even if it is taken back here I mean you put the offense in a great position to go down the field and score a Touchdown or a field goal just depending on what happens But I want to kind of just talk a little bit more about the play we just saw right here so Again, you see him right there. That knee is down. So, yeah, that, the ball is going to be spotted there. But again, I mean, he had a guy wide open. You know, you got to, you got to hit that guy in stride, and you can't have those balls that are, you know, behind you. You got to hit them right there in the hands and give your guys a chance to make a big play. Because had he caught that, he would have had a big gain. I think he probably at least got to the Paladin side of the field. There's George Quarles, the head coach. ETSU Buccaneers will uh, get the history a little bit later on in the broadcast. It's a teacher versus pupil here today. Uh, Clay Hendricks, the head coach of Furman, coached and coached with Coach Quarles here at Furman back in the day from 2017 to 2021. They were coaches together here, and then Coach Quarles took over the head coaching job at ETSU last year. And the verdict is in. Here's the referee's official announcement. After video review, the interception is complete. However, his knee was down on the 47-yard line. Touchdown. And they got the call right. So interception, but not a pick six. So no interception and touchdown for Brinson. Still scoreless 
in the game are both teams, but great field position here for Furman at the ETSU 47. I guarantee you Coach Hendricks isn't complaining about that. So he'll take the, he'll take the turnover, but you'd love to have the touchdown. And play fake, Huff quickly throws to the left side. Joshua Harris scoots out of bounds after a gain of around seven. He's at the 40, and it brings up second down and three. The Furman Paladins, six and one record, four and oh in SoCon play. Here on second down and short, it's Huff. Pocket collapses and gains a little bit. Actually lost a yard, back to the 40. Loss of one, and it brings up third down. There you go. You kind of saw that RPO action right there on that play. I mean, Huff, it looked like he wanted to dump it out right there, but then, of course, pressure showed up, and that's something that Coach Coral said they wanted to do was find ways to contain Huff and don't let him get loose. And then you're looking at a whole other play that's happening if he runs with the football. Yeah, Coach Coral said, yeah, get pressure on him, pressure on him, but don't let Huff scramble and get out of the pocket. On third down, Huff quickly throws. He finds Joshua Harris. He has enough for the first down as he is inside the 35 down to the 34 yard line and that'll move the chains there you go another rpo right there so you saw him in 12 personnel had those two tight ends on the outside pulls it dumps it out to josh harris here's the look at tyler huff starting quarterback for the paladins grad student transfer from presbyterian college he went to pc for college is commissioned through the rotc as second lieutenant in the Army Reserves, and now he's a Furman Paladin, played last year, playing this year, and all he's done, Cole, is go 16-3 and three in his last 19 starts. I'll tell you one thing about him. He is just a terrific football player, and then you look at the cast of offensive players he has around him. I mean, the tight end, Mason Pline, 6'7 guy, really talented, Pearson Toomey, Blake Hunley, Wyatt Hughes, Jacob Johanning, Fred Norman Jr., and then the list of receivers. I mean, he has everything to be successful, and not to mention he is an extremely talented quarterback. And up to Dominic Roberto, off tackle right. And Roberto gains about two and a half yards. He's down at the 32-yard line. And that'll bring up second down, make it third down, rather. Third down and long here for Furman. Here's a look at the ETSU starting defense presented by Bon Secours. Keep an eye on Steven Scott, inside linebacker. He's really good. And uh, Chris Hope, number 14, is safety. Good in the secondary for this ETSU Bucks team. Third down and seven here for Furman. Huff scrambling. Pocket collapses. He's on his feet inside the 30, and he goes down at the 29 yard line. And it brings up fourth down to the Dens. Yeah, you saw it. So, right there, pressure came in late. We see the replay here. Look at the right tackle, Fred Norman. He had got bulldozed on the bull rush. You may not get to see that replay in time, but still, the Palins are going to stay out there and run a play. They feel confident enough to go for it on fourth down. So Furman will go for it. Furman, the number three rated team in the FCS in the nation. Six and one record. Looking for its first 5-0 and start in SOCOM play since 2006. And the pass is complete. And Joshua Harris has forward progress inside the 25, down to the 23. New set of downs for Furman, first down and 10. There you go, empty formation right there. You find your big target, Josh Harris. He's Look, he's been pretty impressive throughout his college career, and that's a guy that Tyler Hub knows he can rely on if he needs to get that first down. He knows that Joshua Harris is going to come down with it, and there you see it right there. And they swing out the pass to Wayne Anderson, his first touch of the ball. Anderson, he has enough for the first down inside the 15, down to the 11-yard line. First down and 10 from the 11 for Furman. Good job on that swing pass and then having blockers out there in the perimeter. I mean, usually those plays kind of get blown up or they don't have a significant game because the blocking isn't great out there. But really good job by the receivers out there setting those blocks and it's freed up Wayne Anderson to get that first down. And uh, two tight ends come into the game for Furman on this play. Mason Pline, number 89. Brock Chappell, number 41. Chappell, the tight end on the right, and Pline in the slot to the right side. First down and 10 from the ETSU 11-yard line. Huff, the handoff, and not much there for uh, Dominic Roberto. Roberto, 5'11", 231, grad student from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Actually, no gain on the play. Actually, a loss of one, so, so second and 11. Here's a replay here. They tried to go inside zone right there, and then again, 
ETSU's defensive line did a great job just staying firm in there, not getting pushed back. You see a tackle for loss. A quick throw to the left side, pass is caught by Joshua Harris. He tiptoes out of bounds at the five yard line. Now brings up third down and four. They could get to the one yard line and still have a first down and a few cracks at the goal line. But right now, third down and four from the five. And it was a good job calling the RPO right there. And then finding Josh Harris again. I mean, you're going to see that connection happen a lot more. And that's another thing this Paladin offense wants to do. They want to find ways to get the ball to those receivers outside of Kendall Dean and Luke Shiflett and Colton Hitz. And they want to be able to get that ball to other guys that are very big key players on this offense. Uh, here comes the pressure, avoids it initially, throws it into the end zone and sails it out of bounds and it's incomplete. He just threw a prayer up there. He was hoping that Mason Pline, the tight end, could come down with it. He could not, and it brings up fourth down. So here's a replay here. He actually had Pline open late. Actually, not even late. He had him open. He just didn't see him in time. And really good job by Huff not taking a sack right there and just throwing the ball away. But bringing out the field goal unit. And, hey, you in the drive at least with some points pinning the kick. 23-yard field goal try coming up by Ian Williams. He is 5 for 10 on field goals this year. Snap is good. Hold is good. And the kick is good as well. And we get a timeout on the field. 7.51 to go in the opening quarter. It's homecoming at Furman. Paladins lead it 3-0 over ETSU. 2023 in the home team, the Paladins lead ETSU 3-0 here almost, mid, almost midway through the first quarter of play. As Ian Williams kicks it deep, and that'll be a touchback for ETSU, first and 10 at the 25 for the Bucks. So uh, what did you like best about the Furman drive that resulted in three points? Well, what I like best, I mean, Tyler Huff just getting the ball out of his hands to have some really good passes. At the same time, though, you know, you got to kind of know your keys and what you're looking for. And when you have Mason Pline wide open in the, in the end zone, you got to be able to see that, be able to throw the football, I understand pressure's coming. And, you know, you, it's a quick release, up, you know, in, on that play. So you got to be able to get that ball out. On the other side, though, what I like from ETSU on defense, they held in strong and firm against a really good Palin and offense. So this ETSU defense could really keep <laughs> them in the game. First and 10 for the Buccaneers at the... Bucks zone 25, second possession of the game for ETSU. Riddle throws, quickly fires it, and it's caught by Xavier Geyerdetz, number 19 in the white jersey, makes the catch, and it's enough for a Bucks first down. Really good job right there, getting Riddle going. You're going to see it here, you're going to send the guy on the out right there, just finds a soft spot in the zone. Michael Robinson out there in coverage. And honestly, that's what you got to do with young quarterbacks. You don't want to just keep running the football. You got to get them going, throw the football a little bit, get them comfortable and adjust it to the speed of the game. New set of downs, first and 10, the handoff up the middle to Bryson Irby, and he maybe gains a half a yard on the play. Let's take a look at the uh, Bon Secours starting lineup for the Furman Paladins defense. And you see Evan DiMaggio, we highlighted him in the open, number 39 in purple for Furman, the reigning Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Week. We might note that uh, uh, Travis Blackshear out, star corner for Furman. He's out today. He will not play. Yeah, he is out today. Hopefully he is back next week because they're going to need him against Chattanooga. But you're going to see a couple young guys get some reps here at corner today. And it's going to be exciting to see how they adjust. No gain on the play, second down and 10 for ETSU. Here's Bryson Irby barreling through traffic, lowers the shoulder, and he's all the way up to the 42-yard line. This is an ETSU team, an offense that, Cole, we're going to see a little bit of everything today. We'll see a spread offense. We'll see some option offense. In fact, we will see from time to time probably the Wildcat formation in offense for the Bucks. Yeah, we'll see that, and hopefully we get to see a uh, somebody throw the football out of the Wildcat. That'd be kind of cool, but uh, this is going to be a game where they're going to try everything out. They got to figure out what they want to see going forward and what's going to be able to work against some of these other teams that they have left on their schedule. Third down and four. Riddle. All kinds of time. Ball is deflected at the line of scrimmage, and it's incomplete. Batted down at the line of scrimmage, and... That'll bring up fourth down, and the punting team will come out for the box. So right here, you have an interior twist with Matt Sachoka and then also Xavier Stevens. This isn't even really the pass-rushing unit. They're just getting guys reps. And then Alex Mayer, who is actually 
solidified as the best pass rusher on this football team. And I asked Coach Hendricks, I asked the defensive line coach, I asked everybody, Coach Vaughn, they said that is the guy that you want out there one-on-one -on -one with any tackle, big speed, the finesse guy gets the hands up and then knocks down the pass. Nate Brackett for ETSU, back to kick it away and receiving the kick, fair catch signal made by Joshua Harris. He fair catches it at the 20. Timeout on the field, 5.47 to go in the first. Furman still leads it 3-0 on ESPN+. Brock Bowling, Cole Neely back in Greenville. 5.47 to go in the first quarter, 3-0. Paladins with a lead, Paladins with their second Offensive possession, quick throw. Huff finds Joshua Harris, has the first down and is forced out of bounds. Up at the 37-yard line, good throw and good catch as well. You're going to see a lot of that combination here today. And then you see the Palins, they went in 21 personnel, had those two backs out there in the split. And they, they kind of been using that a little bit early on in the game. They wanted to make these defenders feel like they're going to run the football. And obviously really good, just play action off of it and just dumping out the Harris. The fake, the handoff, the throw over the middle, incomplete. Looking for Joshua Harris. He was a double coverage and got whacked at the 50-yard line, but no call on the play, incomplete pass, and brings up second down and 10. And there you go again, so RPO action this time, and then you thought you have Joshua Harris coming in on the glance route, and then just really good defensive coverage right there by the corner. So right here, there it is, actually on the, yep, on the corner right there, just really great coverage and force the incompletion. Here's Dominic Roberto trying to turn the corner on the sweep around the right side, and he gains a couple of yards. He's just shy of the 40, brings up third down. Talk to Coach Clay Hendricks of Furman before the game. Asked him what he likes best about this team the last couple of weeks. He says that his team was already good. It has shown improvement in various areas. However, he feels the team could still get better. He says this team's toughness has really shown up the last couple of weeks. On the road, getting two wins at a good Sanford team and at ranked Western Carolina last week. Here's a little screenplay. Huff finds Kendall Dean. Dean regains his balance inside the 40 and goes down at the 34-yard line. Another throw and catch. Huff to Dean for the first down. Yeah, you kind of see a little bit of a different approach so far in this football game. I mean, really good right here. So there's a tunnel screen. And that's something the Palins run a lot. They've been doing that every game, just running that tunnel screen. And again, you see a little bit of a different error, not, not error, but kind of feel with this offense, just throwing the football a lot more often. Huff, all kinds of time, airs it out to the left sideline, passes overthrown, then incomplete, looking for wide receiver Colton Hinton, number 82, covered by Sheldon Arnold, good defensive back for the Bucks, and brings up second down and 10. Yeah, right here, so let's look at the protection right here. Three-man rush, they dropped eight. Really good protection on the outside, and then right there, just wasn't a catchable ball. I know he's probably looking a little bit for pass interference, but that's not going to happen on that particular play. And I'll say one thing that is interesting, look at the, at the left tackle right here. That's Jake Johanning out there. Up, has time to the right flat, Dan incomplete, looking for Kendall Dean again. Had a good catch and run a moment ago. That pass is incomplete and brings up third down and long, third down and 10. It's a really good job by the defense right here. They're playing really stout. Again, this, this defense, they're not bad. They have a lot of great things going with this defense, and that's going to be key for keeping this offense into the game. And then hopefully you just hope your offense just generates a good drive and finds a way to move the ball down the field. Trips receivers on the left side of the line. Third down and a long 10 here for Furman Huff. Hit as he throws and a crossing route incomplete. Pass was intended for Wayne Anderson, just dropped it incomplete. That's a concentration play right there. Wayne Anderson, you got to come down with it right here. Coming on the underneath right there, it just, just doesn't secure it. Concentration play, got to have those. And initially it looked like Furman was going to keep the offense on the field. Now it sends out the kicking unit and looks like uh, Ian Williams will try a 52 yard field goal his career high career long actually as long this year 39 yards so this is a 52 yard attempt the placement is down and the kick is on the way plenty of distance and it is good Ian Williams from 52 and doubles the Paladins lead from three to six 
I think they're just going to try whatever they can here, and I feel like they can do that. So you see her right there, Ian Williams, 52 yards out. Beautiful kick all the distance. The specialists, they struggled last week, but now starting off really strong here. 6-0 Paladins here on ESPN+. Plus. Back in Greenville and Cole, how about this 52-yard field goal hit a moment ago by Ian Williams? It was a no-doubter. Oh, uh, no doubt at all. I mean, Pat McAfee is out there smiling somewhere, telling and yelling that uh, college kickers are legit and it is a hard job. And, you know, I think he probably would have made that 10 more yards out. I think he would have made a 62-yard field goal right there. Uh, definitely had the leg and the accuracy from 52. Might have gone longer had he tried a, an attempt farther out. Two field goals here for Furman in the first quarter. Paladins lead it 6 0. It's homecoming here, 2023. Here's the kickoff by Ian Williams. It's pretty deep. And ETSU lets it sail into the end zone, a touchback. And the Bucks have the football first and 10 at their own 25. So the Buccaneers of ETSU come back onto the field, talked with head coach George Quarles before the game. Head coach of the Bucs, he says this is a team that's just beat up. It has a lot of injuries. He's down to his fifth string quarterback. The other two quarterbacks are out for the year. His team is down to three walk-on QBs. The offensive line, he says, is young. But defensively, his team has not given up too many big plays. Here's the Wildcat formation. Zach Borish will take the direct snap, one of the running backs, and he is stuffed for a loss of two yards back to the 23. Yeah, we knew this Wildcat formation was going to come. And one key thing that I've noticed, too, just kind of looking at ETSU, they don't really hand the ball off when Boris is in that Wildcat formation. Typically, he keeps it. Of course, we've seen some triple option out of it. But right there, he just decided to keep it and ran with it. And kudos to the Paladins just being there to stack up on it and have a loss of yardage. So a loss of two after that Wildcat formation and run. Now William Riddle back in there at quarterback in the shotgun. Loss of two, second down and 12 for the Bucks. Bucks one and three in SoCon play, looking for that second win in conference action here this year. They hand it off to Bryson Irby, and Irby bangs his way past the 30, and he's down at the 31. Really good job, too, just finding that hole, just getting your feet moving, finding a way right there. And here we go with the replay here. Really good job, We're going to keep it. He could have kept it outside if he wanted to, but then again, he saw that hole open up, cut it inside, and way to fight for some extra yards, get some of those yards back that you lost on first down. We talked about the injuries at ETSU. How about uh, losing star wide receiver Will Huzzy for the season? That's a tough break. Yeah, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I watched that game, and my heart just broke, literally. I mean, I was really looking forward to watching him play in this game, and I kind of knew what was going to happen in terms of what they wanted to do, and let's go. Cali Chizik just making a play. He's dynamic. I'll talk about him in a second, but... Will Huzzy, I mean, just a dy dy dynamic football player. Hate to see his college career get cut short um, the way it did. So here we go. See the interior twist right there. Cali Chizik just reads it well. I talked to Coach Vaughn about him. You know, the first thing he said, he's Cali Chizik is the quarterback of this defense. I mean, just he unlocked a completely different level after that 2021 season that he missed due to an injury. He just completely unlocked something and just has not been the same player, just been playing so much more faster, much more physical, and just reads everything perfectly. Nate Brackett to boom it away. It is a pretty big booming kick, and Harris will make the catch and return it from his own 27-yard line. Flags are thrown, and Harris out of bounds near the 30. And it might be uh, coming back a little bit. Might have had an illegal block in the back. We'll see. I wanted to bet you're right about that one, Brock. I think that's going to be on Wayne Anderson. As the officials discuss it, here's the verdict. During the return, holding, receiving team number 38, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So a holding penalty on the return. And the Paladins have the football even deeper now in their own territory. There's Clay Hendricks, head coach of the Furman Paladins in his sixth season, 47 wins, 27 losses in his career. So here's the hole coming up here, right there. You see that hole, and there it is. I mean, 
Could have fooled me. I thought they were going to throw it on Wayne Anderson there, but not really. Here's Dominic Roberto. Turns the corner on the left side. Bangs his way past the 30. And he is stopped at the 31-yard line. A, move, a gain of 11. They move the chains. First down and 10 for the ends. Really good run here. I mean, you look at the action in the backfield here. Looks like going to go a little bit of counter. Just find a hole and really good blocking up front from the pullers. Big first down from Dominic Roberto. They call Roberto's number again, goes up the middle, no gain. And brings up second down for Furman. Furman has won 10 straight SOCON games. The school record is 13 straight SOCON wins from 1988 through 1990. Uh, Furman is 13-1 in his last 14 Southern Conference games. Just a... Very good team, very steady from last year to this year. Quick throw, they find Luke Shefflett, and Shefflett gains a few. He's past the 35, out to the 36. As we have one minute remaining in the opening quarter, Furman leads it by two field goals. That was a good job by Khalil Anderson. Kind of had a, gave him a lot of cushion right there, and he steps up and makes a really good play. As soon as the ball is caught, doesn't give up any yards after the catch there, and just gets him down, and here you go, third and medium. Obvious, could be passing situation here. It looks like that'll probably be the case. They send Anderson in motion. They swing it out to Anderson. Oh, he lost the ball again, and it's incomplete. Had it at the 35, just could not hold it in, and now it's fourth down. There you go, two drops by Wayne Anderson right there. You kind of got to blame the, the really the back right here. Even though the ball's a little bit further out, Wayne, it hits him right in the hands. Coach Brian Bratton, who used to be here as the wide receivers coach now with the Indianapolis Colts, he would always tell his receivers, if the ball hits you in the hands, you got to come down with it. There's no excuse why you shouldn't catch it. Ryan Levy to put it away for Furman, and a big booming kick. Xavier Geyerdetz is there, makes the catch, fair catch signal at the 20. 27 seconds to go here in the opening quarter, and Furman leads it 6-0. So beautiful day for college football, homecoming 2023 here at Furman University in Greenville, South Carolina. You look at the yardage numbers, uh, big difference there. Furman, a lot more yardage, but only up six. Yeah, I mean, again, this is credit to that ETSU defense. They're finding ways to get stops and get this Paladin offense off the field. And now you, you got to hope that your offense can find a way to get something going. And now an official's timeout because they got to wait for the uh, chain gang to set up properly over on that other side. And now we're ready to play. Riddle in the shotgun, Irby the running back behind him. First down and 10 for the box. False start. And flags come in. This will be false start on ETSU. False start. Offense. Number 75, five yard penalty, still first down. So first and 10 now becomes first and 15. Yep, and that's one thing you don't want to do with this offense. You don't want to go backwards. You know, you don't have a, necessarily, Riddle isn't the guy that, that can sling the ball down the field and create those big explosive plays as a quarterback. But you at least want to put him in a good situation to help manage the football game. And right there, that's not helping you out. First and 15 for the Buccaneers at their own 15. And they give it to Bryson Irby. And one of the bigger offensive weapons on this team. It gains a couple. And brings up uh, second down at about 13. So they decide to go run stretch right there. To hopefully get Bryson Irby kind of on the outside and let him get onto the perimeter and make a guy miss. Again, Bryson Irby, not only is he really good at running north and south, he can run east and west right there, and you want to get him in space and let him make a play. That's the end of the first quarter. Furman leads it 6-0, second quarter coming up after this on ESPN+. Plus. Hey, Hendricks both played one year together at Furman in 1985. George Quarles became an assistant coach under Clay Hendricks in 2017. Coached under him for five years, took over the ETSU job last year in 2022. And uh, now it's the teacher versus the pupil. And so far, the teacher has the lead by six. Yeah, I mean, you look at that 2019 year, that was a lot of success that that Paladin offense had. Fortunately, I was a part of that offense. And 
I mean, it, it was a fun year for us. So really curious to see what Coach Quarles is going to kind of get going here for this Buccaneer offense. Riddle throws over the middle, pass is caught by Tommy Winton, one of the receivers, short of the first down, about a yard shy. And it brings up third down and one. It's a really good job by Riddle finding that hole in that pocket in the zone right there and is delivering the strike. Looked like it was a dig route coming across. Really good job just finding a guy, getting the ball down the field, and here you are with a very third and short, with third and one here. You expect the run just to go ahead and get that first down, maybe inside zone, see what the personnel is and what they'll do from there. Riddle under center this time. A handoff to Bryson Irby and second effort. I'm not sure if he got there or not. It's going to be close. They say he's about a half a yard shy now. Brings up fourth down and less than a yard to go. Great call right there by the official scene that didn't get there. So here we go. Everybody kind of coming down and just hoping it looks like a little bit more of a duo run out there. Didn't have the blocking where he wanted it to go and here you go with a fourth and one in same formation. Quarterback keeper and the sneak is good for the first down by William Riddle. And that'll move the chains. William Riddle, again, fifth string quarterback. Two other quarterbacks injured for the year, and he gets his second start. Interesting formation to go here. I mean, you go with the quarterback sneak, a little touch push action. I love that every football team in America has decided to, to run with it. But really good job getting that first down, extending the drive, and they're going to go wildcat here. You see uh, their, their back coming in here. Borish, typically he's the guy who ran a lot of that when it, during his time in Idaho. And here we go. And a stoppage of play. I think we have a timeout. Timeout taken by ETSU. We'll take it as well. 13.03 to go in the second quarter. Furman by six on ESPN+. Plus. You see the end again with the fourth and one right there. Just a really good quarterback sneak. Saw the touch push action. I mean, you can't think about any other plays that Coach Quarles is going to do. I mean, not it's not desperate, but it's one of those that you have nothing to lose, so you might as well just see what your offense is capable of. Challenge them, challenge, them, challenge those offensive linemen up front, see can they get enough push. And then that kind of gets your team in a good rhythm, gives them a little bit of hope. And when you have a little bit of hope, you fight a lot harder. New set of downs for ETSU, first and 10. At their own 31, Riddle back in a quarterback. Hit the shotgun inside handoff, Bryson Irby. Partially stumbled, partially tackled, goes down, a loss of two, back to the 29, back to the, uh, the tush push, the bush push back in the day with USC. <laughs> uh, do you like that play? Some people want to see it go away. I say keep it. I mean, the defense knows it's coming. It's just strength against strength, right? Make a stop, right? Well, to be fair, the only reason why everybody wanted to go away is because the Eagles run it so efficiently, but nobody else in the NFL can run it. And why get rid of something that only one team can do successfully? So I, I don't see a reason why I get rid of it. You know, find a way to stop the Eagles, I guess. I mean, that's the only thing you can say about that. Riddle swings it out, passes caught Bryson Irby. Boy, they've called his number a lot today. Running the football, catching the football. We talked to Coach Quarles about Bryson Irby. They say he's the team's best offensive player this year. He's able to rack up a lot of yardage. He's been the most consistent running back this year for the Bucks. They say he has explosive speed, a good combo back, good player for this team here in 2023. Yeah, I mean, he, he's outstanding, okay? You want to be able to have him on the field. He's going to be a key reason why this offense is able to move down the field. And when you have a guy like Bryson Irby that can kind of handle the workload, that can carry the offense a little bit, you, you want to find ways to make his life a little easier. Third and eight, Riddle swings it out, and pass nearly intercepted, it's incomplete, batted away by Furman's Luke Clark, number 44 in purple. Redshirt Jr. knocks it down, and the punting team comes out for the Bucks. Here we go, you see a little bit more of a man coverage right there. There was an interior blitz, had the linebacker kind of reading what the center was doing right there, and that triggered him to go, and then Luke Clark, Great coverage, staying with Irby right there, step for step, and then just making the play on the ball. Really good job by the Bandit. And Nate Brackett will kick it away again for the third time for the Bucks. 
Here comes the pressure and might have been partially blocked, but fair catch signal made by Joshua Harris just inside the 30. And we get a timeout on the field, but not yet. Penalty flag in the play. This might be a rough in the kicker. To Running into the kicker on the receiving team, number nine, five-yard penalty, replay, fourth down. So running into the kicker, five-yard penalty, and they'll kick it again. It's not enough for the first down. Uh, yeah. So Wayne Anderson, number nine, called for the running into the kicker penalty. Still not enough for the first down yardage wise on the penalty, so they'll re kick it. Fourth down and eight. Just an opportunity to pin them deeper. That's, that's pretty much all that is. And I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know what Coach Quarles has in this playbook, but if they decide to go with a fake punt here, I mean, hey, why not? It's a close game, and if you want to try it, try it, but I highly doubt he'll do that. And a whistle. Do we have the flag again? Yes, we do. Ball start. Offense, number 20. Five-yard penalty. Still four So pounds. that's a five-yard penalty. False start. And the Bucks go back further in the wrong direction. Yeah, I mean, had the rough, rough and run into the kicker penalty. Now you get a false start. It just... You know, it's kind of, that's the theme of this ETSU team here. I mean, you take one step forward, you take one step back. Sometimes you take another step forward and you take two steps back. It's been such an up and down year for an incredibly talented roster. You know, you just kind of hate to see what's going on. Spiraling kick by Brackett, sending Joshua Harris inside his own 10. He feels it at the four yard line and gains a couple out to the seven and that's it. And we get a timeout of the field, 11-13 to go. Second quarter of the first half, Paladins by two field goals on ESPN+. Plus. Back in Greenville, the head coach of Furman, Clay Hendricks. He and his team have a 6-0 lead. Clay Hendricks now in his seventh season coaching his alma mater. It's been a good fit for him. He played here for four years, an assistant coach for 20 years, went to the Air Force as an assistant coach, came back, and he is now the head coach of a number three rated team in the country in the FCS. Huff to throw over the middle. Luke Shufflet has it as a Zach West. And Drew Coney, the linebackers take him down. Short gain, brings up second down. Good job by Huff there again, finding those little gaps in that coverage. Fine seeing it right there and the linebackers having that those, you know, hitch and curls in that zone area, finding his marker, throwing it right there. He saw him go through his progressions a little bit too. Dominic Roberto up the middle. And Roberto past the 15 near the 16 yard line. So if you're Furman, got a couple of field goals, that's it. What needs to get the running game and the passing game going here? Well, one, I mean, you gotta see these blockers kind of get their head across right there on the zone these zone runs I mean Mason Pline has to shoot his head and has to help Dominic Roberto out acrobatic catch made by the tight end Parks Kissinger number 81 six for six four 240 out of Los Angeles played two years ago at Michigan State transfers to Furman somehow extended the arms made the catch for a short game I go ahead Hurry up and go ahead and get a play call just in case. I don't know if that was the cleanest catch. And there you go. Oh, they're saying it's enough for the first down. Okay. So they move the chains. And are they going to review it again? They just might. I thought he made the catch cleanly, if it is indeed still a catch, but it looked a little funny. It did look funny. Um, 
because it looked like he had to kind of come back and catch it again for a second. Like he, it hit him in the hands and then the ball kind of flew out a little bit, but I think they're just going to roll with it here. Please put 9.51 on the game clock. That's a clock Nine, issue. Five, clock okay. issue. Putting some extra time on the clock. 10 seconds go back on the clock. 9.51 now to go in the second quarter. Here we go. And off to Roberto again. Bangs forward. Pass the 20 out to the 21. Well, the Paladins began the season week one, winning over Tennessee Tech. Lost at South Carolina in the Power Five in week two, but the Paladins held their own there for at least a half of the game against an FBS team in the Power Five. And then after that, five straight wins, winning at Kennesaw State, winning at home against 21st-ranked Mercer, winning at home against the Citadel, winning at Samford, winning at Western Carolina for five straight wins. Roberto breaks tackles and goes to the right side. Off tackle right, gains the first down, and they move the chains again. Really good run here. I mean, here's a replay for it. You see with that, just following his blockers right there, finds the hole. Really good job by Jake Johanny getting up there, sealing off a linebacker, and then Roberto just keeps his feet moving. Really big back, hard to bring him down. There's a lot of scouts in the NFL. They're curious to see what they can use him with. They want to see him play more consistently, and right now he's picking it up, getting going. Huff on first down, airs it out down the far sideline, looking for Colton Hinton, and does he make the catch? He, no, he bobbled it, and it's incomplete. Correction, it's Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon, number 88, bobbles it, incomplete. Almost had it, brings up second down. Yep, here we go, the replay here, really good coverage right there. You see the go route, great coverage. You see Nick Cannon kind of lose the ball a little bit. A little bit under throwing at the same time, but man, had an opportunity to catch it, hit him in the hands, you gotta come down with it. Incomplete pass brings up second down and 10 for Tyler Huff and the Paladins offense. Furman leads it six nothing here in the second quarter. The inside handoff to Roberto. Now back to that five game winning streak here by Furman coming into today. Coach Hendricks said to his team this week, he said, hey, let's continue to improve. He feels this team has played its best this year against its best opponents. He says the reason is because the focus has been so good and he wants this team to stay focused. Yeah, I mean, you can see right here. I mean, they, they played really hard against Western Carolina and I don't know if that's because of the competition level. You know, and they, they knew they had to stand up and rise to that challenge because right here, I mean, we kind of compared this to the last home game they played when the Citadel was here. Started off slow, wasn't very, weren't very efficient on offense, and you're starting to see a little bit of the same thing here. And here we go for replay right here. Great play by Tyler Huff. See him go through his progressions. Quarterbacks always want to go either left to right or right to left. And you see him, he went from his right to his left, and he finds his receiver right there. Really good play right there. But it looks like a penalty on the play. I think we may have had a holding penalty. I didn't see a flag, but they're bringing the ball back. Well, they talk about shooting yourself in the foot right there. There it is, just the, the woes of starting a little bit slow. So now third down and 17 from its own 25 for Furman Huff. To the left flat, caught by Luke Shefflett, and Shefflett bangs his way past the 30. Goes down to the 35, short of the first down, and it brings up fourth down. Yeah, two straight road wins in a row against good road, against teams on the road the last couple of weeks for Furman. Winning at Samford two weeks ago, winning at top 10 team, Western Carolina. Furman, six and one, ranks number three in the nation in the FCS. And Levy to punt it away for Furman. High spiraling kick, sending Xavier Geyerdetz back to his own 19, makes the fair catch there and a timeout on the field. 7.06 to go, second quarter. Paladins up by six on homecoming Saturday on ESPN+. Plus. Backs right there that have been very key to the Paladins' success, especially last week. You got thunder and lightning right there. You got Dominic Roberto and Wayne Anderson. Wayne Anderson not having a lot of carries, not really hasn't had a rushing stat. I kind of charged at him so far today. Dominic Roberto carrying a workload right there for the bats, but you want to see Wayne Anderson get going. That's more of your elusive bat, the guy that gets side to side, but having a rough game in the passing game. First and 10, Buccaneers, Riddle throws over the middle, passes caught. 
by Quinn Caballero, one of the wide receivers of this team. Played two years at Charleston Southern in the Big South in 2019-2020. Now he's at ETSU Buccaneer. There you go again. Good job finding the soft spot in these zones and give William Riddle some credit. I mean, he's finding it. He's surveying the field. He's going through his progressions, and then he's seeing it, and he's delivering a, a nice dot to his receivers, and he's giving his team a chance. Gain of eight brings up second down and two. And they go to the running game again. Bryce and Irby, no gain this time. In fact, he loses a yard. Loses one yard back now to the 26. So you see them now. They're in 21 personnel. Trying to run a little bit of stretch to the weak side. And right there, Alex Mayer says, uh, I'm not having any of that. I'm going to blow this thing up. And there you see it. Loss of yards right there. Great job by the Paladin defense getting some penetration. And that's one thing, Brock, that kills zone runs is penetration. Penetration will always kill that. And you saw the yardage numbers heavily in favor of Furman, but only a six-point lead as we're past the midway point of the second quarter. Now third down and three. Free TSU. Riddle to throw. And he finds Trey Foster, and Foster can't get there. He's a little bit short. Trey Foster makes the catch. 5'11", 193, redshirt sophomore from Knoxville, Tennessee. Good job here. You see the personnel packages. He's got 21 right there. See this back, kind of get out there in space. You got to, Jalen Miller, you got to wrap up, kind of play two-hand touch on him instead of making the tackle. And then really good cleanup duty by the defensive back for the Paladins. And there you go, fourth and short. And that ETSU offense staying out there. They believe in themselves. And here we go. So fourth and short. Bucks elects not to go for it here on fourth and one, as it did earlier in the quarter here. Bucks hanging around, hanging in there with the number three rated team in the nation in the FCS in Furman. Joshua Harris makes the fair catch at the 27. Time out of the field, 4.50 to go in the half. Furman by six on ESPN Plus. A homecoming afternoon here in Greenville, South Carolina. Six nothing Furman in the second quarter. The handoff to Wayne Anderson out of the timeout. Dan Anderson, not much there. In fact, he loses a yard, brings up second down and 11. So this ETSU team, Cole, only two wins on the year, two and five. It's banged up, lots of injuries. But this defense has held its own against the Furman offense. What are you seeing today here for the Bucs? Say what you want to say about this ETSU team, but that defense finds a way to show up and show out. And right here, they're not shocked by a number three Furman. They're, you know, they're not backing down. They're giving them a great football game. I mean, they're really challenging this offense. And you want to see that continue. Huff on second down and 11. Cocks the arm, throws it over the middle, pass is caught. Colton Hinton, number 82 in purple, has enough of the first down, and they move the chains. Good job by Colton Hinton, kind of settling down, and find that, again, pockets and zones right there. You see him settle down and throw the ball. You see a little inside twist right there between 93 and 95 at tackle. Here's Huff on first down, down the left sideline, looking for a man. The pass is juggled and bobbled and then broken up, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Joshua Harris. He was covered in the play by the corner. Javon Henderson, number 23, brings up second down. And you see Coach Roper, he's dialing up some of these deep shots. You know, Coach Hendricks, when we talked to him, he said he wanted to have more explosive plays. And right there, that's one way to have it. You win your one-on-one -on -one right there with, you know, wide receiver DB battle. You have a huge explosive play, and that honestly could get the offense rolling at that point. If that, that's a pass that's completed. Huff, the play, play fake, rolls out to the right, hit as he throws, fires it to the sideline, sails it out of bounds, and it's incomplete. That's one thing the coach quarrels of ETSU said before the game, must get pressure on Tyler Huff, but keep him in the box. And that time he was flushed out, but it's incomplete. And there you see right there, 11 personnel. You see a little bit of a boot action. You want to free up that tight end and let him get a little bit further down the field and probably hit him. That was more than likely the check down route. So right there, good job by the quarterback, Tyler Huff, just knowing that it's not there. Just throw the ball out of bounds, live to fight another, another play. Third and ten, Huff, he'll throw it again to the sideline. Way overthrown and incomplete, looking for Luke Shefflett, number 12 in purple, covered by Khalil Anderson, the corner. And just like that, a stop by the box with 3.31 to go. And only a six-point game, affirming in the lead. Yeah, and you saw pressure being dialed up. 
right there. You see Jake Johanning getting a start at left tackle today. Really good job for the pressure packages right there. Just couldn't win on that one-on-one -on -one rep. That puts pressure on Tyler Huff, and he can't really settle in on that throw. Then you see Wide Hughes, a little bit gimpy, getting up after that play. You want to be able to keep these offensive linemen healthy. Don't know why Pearson Toomey isn't out there, but, man, you need him back going forward. High booming kick. Geyer Dets will make the fair catch at the 18. That's where ETSU will take over with 3.23 to go in the second quarter. So ETSU banged up, injured, still trying to find its identity here midway through the season, hanging in there, holding its own against the number three rated team in the nation in the FCS. Hey, you see it, feeling a little bit homesick. I mean, hey, ETSU has played some outstanding football at home. And honestly, if we were just going off of those stats, they're the fourth best team in points per game on offense in the SOCOM. So they need to have that transfer on these road games. And right now, offense isn't really gelling. But that defense, man, they're playing lights out. Riddle, the play fake, quick throw, pass is caught by Tommy Winton, one of the receivers, and he's up to the 25-yard line, a gain of around eight. Brings up second down as we approach three minutes to go in the second quarter. Yeah, you see William Riddle, I mean, he's starting to deal a little bit more, finding some of these players are getting open. Receivers doing a really good job coming back to the football, finding these holes in the zone coverage, and he's just spreading the ball out. Really good job here by William Riddle so far. Riddle, play fake, throw, quick slant, caught by Xavier Geyer. Did he catch the ball or not? They say it's incomplete. He caught it, dropped it. Incomplete, brings up third down and three. So here we go again, RPO action. Right there, you see him come on the glance, and actually he had the route right there. Really good job, but then uh, you got to hold on to that football. That's a big explosive play they're going to want to have back. That should have been completed. Hate to see the receiver drop it. Third down and three. Riddle, quick throw, pass is caught. Someone's helmet came flying off, and forward progress is stopped, but it's enough for the first down for ETSU. Tommy Winton, number 10 in white, makes the catch, so then he lost his helmet. Good job finding it again. It just, they're finding ways to get these receivers in these holes in these zone coverages. And, Right there, you see it here, and I know why everybody was thinking, like, that should have been a flag, and let's see it. He ripped his helmet off. Because it looks like they were trying to rip the ball out right there. Yeah. I can see the argument for why they would have wanted that penalty, and not going to happen. Here's Bryson Irby, has a first down and more, burst of speed, and that's one of the better plays we've seen today offensively by ETSU. Irby all the way past midfield. Actually, they call him down right at the 50, and they'll move the chains. Good play here. Had a chance to keep it. Decided to hand it off to a guy that he can rely on as we look at the replay here. This was the exact duo run that this ETSU team needed right here. You see they ran to the tight end, the center, was not working on that front side and there you go duo right there just running back puts his foot in the ground and then boom finds his hole and then he's turning and moving willing and dealing and here's the wildcat formation the running back zach borish in at quarterback now they have foster throwing it deep but it's incomplete and a penalty fly comes in late and micah robinson is going to be called for pass interference and he can't believe it waiting for a pass to get thrown out there and there you go micah robinson a little bit too handsy on the coverage, and that was an easy flag to throw out there. Not having Travis Blackshear out here to cover their best receiver. You got to hope he comes back because this is going to be a tough game That's next week. Defense, number 14. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. So a penalty, a first down, and here's the uh, razzle-dazzle play in the Wildcat formation. So right there. If anything, that's, that's actually a bad call right there. See, the receiver is extended right here. Right there is probably what the rep was looking for. And then right there, Mike, Michael Robson kind of let him go. I don't agree with that call. Riddle over the middle, pass is caught, and a sandwich catch made by Xavier Geyer. That's number 19, holds it in between two Paladin defensive backs. It's a first down inside the 20. Clock running at a minute 40 to go. They'll move the chains again. 
There we go, another RPO action, seeing the receiver come across on the glance. William Riddle just willing and dealing again. I mean, just finds it. Really good job hitting him on the glance. And here we are, Paladin territory. This is the, by far the best drive this ETSU offense has had all day. Trips receivers to the right and one to the left for Riddle and company on first down. Riddle fires it into the end zone, passes overthrown and incomplete. Looking for Xavier Geyerdetz. He was covered by Callie Chizik. Second in to go. Great coverage by Callie Chizik here. And let's look at the rush right here. Another interior rush between the defensive tackles. And right there, great coverage. Don't get a penalty. Stayed with him. I mean, you can't ask for anything else better than that. Riddle in the shotgun, second down and 10, minute 10 to go in the second quarter. Here's the handoff to Bryson Irby. They've called his number a lot today. Off tackle right, Dan gains a few inside the 20, down to the 17. Clock running inside of a minute to go. Second quarter, Furman leads it by two field goals. Yep, and here we go again. Really good job following the zone action right there. Gets a little hold, but Xavier Stevens comes in and makes a great tackle in that gap. Really good job having your gap and controlling it, getting off a block. Then getting that tackle right there for a short game. Third down and eight. That clock is ticking. And Riddle flush throws over the middle. Pass is intercepted. Intercepted by Furman's Kylie Chizik. And Chizik has some room across the 10, across the 15. Out of bounds. Pushed out of bounds hard. Past the 20, but Callie Chizik gets the interception, his fourth interception of the season. You talk about a guy that shows up when you need him to show up. Took off the glasses, Clark Kent went away, and here comes Superman out of nowhere. Really good job just reading it by Callie Chizik. The second interception thrown today by Riddle and a big time interception near the goal line by Callie Chizik. Again, his fourth interception of the season. 5'9", 183, fifth year senior from Auburn, Plus Alabama. Foul, illegal blindside block. On Makes the, the pick. Team, number 93. And then After a penalty the flag goal. on the return. Okay. It's on Furman, an illegal block to the back. Late penalty flag thrown. I was more surprised that wasn't called, but I think it was still in bounds when that hit had came. But Brock, I mean, you talk about Cali Chizik. I mean, in, in that play right there, even though you, know, you see the interception. There's a couple things that we all got to be aware of. I mean, you had the really had the wrong route that was ran in the end zone, which forced the throw by the quarterback. Then the quarterback is eyeing his receiver, and Cali Chizik just makes a heck of a play on it. And then you see the interception. That's a missed opportunity for Eastern for East Tennessee State right there. And you could have had an opportunity to at least get a field goal out of that drive and make this a six to three game, but. Kudos to that ETSU defense. They're playing some great football right now, and we're about to go into half of a 6-0 ball game. First half of the books, halftime is here. A defensive slugfest. A couple of field goals by Furman, and that's it. At the break, it's Furman 6, ETSU nothing here on ESPN+. Plus. You need to establish the run. That's first and foremost. I mean, we, yeah, there's been some running that's popped, but it hasn't been consistent. And that's something that has to be generated here. You want to see some consistency in the run game. That opens up the RPO game. And then next thing you know, you're looking at some deep shots that are being completed. And you got to help your receivers win those one-on-ones. Huff hands off to Dominic Roberto. Bangs up the field. Has a first down and more. He's past the 35, down to the 38. 13 yard run, first down for the Paladins. And there you go. That's exactly what I'm talking about right there. And you see, they're going to go counter right here. Really good job. You see, EJ Wilson, really good job kicking that guy and then sealing him on the inside. And then, really good job by the other puller. And then that just frees up Donald Roberto. He gets vertical and then he gets some good yardage. And here's Roberto again. Dominic Roberto, veteran player, preseason first team of SOCON this season. Last week, 154 yards rushing in the win at eighth-ranked Western Carolina. Veteran running back for this team, and a good one as well. And that he is, too. I mean, he's been a huge leader for this team. A lot of these guys, they love hanging out with him. They love talking with him. Um, he's just a real, real good at being a great player and a great student and a great leader of the game. 
pass caught by Luke Shefflett, number 12 in purple for Furman. He's out past the 45, up to the 46, and brings up third down and short. And this is good territory to be in when you're a team that likes to run the football, being third and short situations. You see today, Don Roberto with those 12 attempts for 50 yards. He's still in right now, so you would expect something to be going to him. Maybe a handoff, maybe they run something to, oh, they're going to eye formation here. Yeah, but the first time all day, Huff in the under center position, the handoff to Roberto, and not much there. In fact, he lost half a yard of the play, and it brings up fourth down at about three. Yep. In plays like that, you don't really want Donald Roberto trying to get side to side. You want him to go north and south. You want him to be that bowling ball. But hey, credit to Sheldon Arnold right there coming in there and making a great play. He leads the team in tackles, and then there you see it right there. Finds that little hole that little daylight just takes it away from him. Really good play to force that fourth down, and there's the punt. And fair catch signal made by Xavier Geyerdetz at his own 10. That's where ETSU will take over. So the Bucks, after giving up a first down run, a three and out after that, and now Bucks get the football back. Here's a look at the updated SoCon standings presented by Ingalls. Low prices, love the savings. Furman undefeated in league play, 4-0, looking for its first 5-0 start in league play since 2006. ETSU towards the bottom. One win this year in SoCon play. That was against Wofford, winning that one 41-10 couple of weeks ago. And the interesting thing is ETSU has a chance to be spoiler today and just kind of ruin this season so far for the Paladins in terms of being undefeated in the conference. Handoff for East Tennessee State. Amir Dindy getting the call. Six foot, 191, redshirt freshman from Anderson, South Carolina. Gains a couple of yards. And there you see outside zone. Really good job by that offensive line. Everybody stretching. Those defenders and then really good job just finding that hole and hitting it fast. That's what you want to see out of this offense. You want to find ways to continue to stretch these defenders, kind of make them chase you and then create those big plays. And next thing you know, you're looking at some very favorable situations. They give it to Dendi again. Back-to-back -back handoffs for Amir Dendi. Gains a couple. Brings up third down at about a yard and a half to go. Six-nothing Furman here on a couple of field goals by Ian Williams in the first half. Let's see, here you go again. Good little, good job right there. Getting these guys, finding these holes, inserting backs into the formations and then getting into the play calling here. And you see that right there, the back gets in, inserts himself, makes a really good block on those linebackers. And then next thing you know, you find them, you're running back, just skirting through, finds a way to get just a little bit of yards. And now here you are with a third and short. A lot of options that you can do right here. Riddle in the shotgun, Foster to his left. They hand it off to Foster, and he plows through past the 20, out to the 23-yard line. He has the first down, and they move the chains. And sometimes that's all you got to do, just find ways to keep the chains rolling, keep your defense off the field, who's been playing outstanding so far today. And then you look at this Buccaneer offense, they're finding ways to move the ball right now. You don't need William Riddle to be a... A superhero. You don't need him to go out here and win the game. You just need him to manage the game and find ways to get the ball into his uh, his weapons' hands. And they call Foster's name again. And Foster about a half a yard gain, not much, up at the 24 and a half yard line. Inside 11 minutes to go in the third. Defensive slugfest, offensive struggle. Both teams trying to establish the run here early in the third quarter. And ETSU, you can kind of see their body language. They seem to be having some confidence, you know. They seem to be uh, thinking of themselves, hey, we can we can stay hang in here with the third-ranked team in the nation. I had a coach tell me a long time ago, you play a team that may not be as good as you are and you give them just a little bit of hope, you're in for a dogfight. And that's exactly what the Paladins are in right now. They're in for a dogfight. This is a tough game right now. This ETSU team, they feel like they have a chance and they're executing. They swing it out to Dindy, and Dindy trying to turn the corner. It's on a juke move, and he's banged out of bounds. At about the 30-yard line, and that'll bring up third down for the Bucks. There you go with the replay here. Just a little swing pass outside. Great blocking out there on the perimeter. And then really just really good job by Cam Brinson coming in and making the tackle right there and not letting that play get any more yardage right there, any more yards after the catch. 
So now we're looking at a third and medium here. Coach George Quarles said before the game, one of the keys today for his team is to finish drives well. Not too many trips inside the red zone today. Now at their own 28-yard line, third down and five to go. Riddle over the middle, passes, caught and hauled in somehow by Xavier Geyer. Dads, he hauls it in between two Paladin defenders for the first down. It's a great job here. So good protection up front. Saw the Palace try to go with a little twist. Then Hugh Ryan almost got his arm in there to break up the pass, but really good job by the receiver hauling that thing in there and then getting the first down. Approaching nine minutes to go in the third, six nothing Furman. And Riddle, little double reverse, back pitch. Riddle finds a wide open Tim Skaisko. He juggles it and then he holds it in inside the 35 down to the 32 yard line. What a play by the Bucks. First down inside Furman territory. I tell you what, they're dialing up some play calls right there. And, and when you got to know, in, in order to take some things away from this Paladin team, you got to create some plays. Wide open right there. That's blown coverage by Hugh Ryan. You can tell he had him right there. And man, just, just kind of takes his eyes off of him, and then he just slips by. Really big play. And Trey Foster now trying to establish the running game again. And what a pass by Riddle on that last play to Tim Stayschool. Tied in with the club. One of the bigger plays in the game offensively here for the Bucks. Bucks down two field goals, only six points. A touchdown and an extra point here by the Bucks makes things interesting here in the third quarter. It makes things very interesting. And, you know, we talked about it a little bit too. We didn't expect to be here in this moment for this game to be as tight and exciting as it is in this so far. But I mean, hey, the Bucks are dealing on offense right now. Credit to them. Here comes the pressure, and down he goes. A sack of William Riddle. He was sacked by Jack Barton, number 93 for Furman. That's his third sack of the season. So yeah, when we see this replay coming up here. You're going to see Jack Barnes going to come off the edge untouched. But then let's look on the interior side. Matthew Sachelka right here just completely beats the right guard off the snap of the football right there. Didn't have to work a move, just beats him there, makes a play. And he kind of threw down uh, Riddle kind of hard there. Riddle can't afford to be hurt. Uh, already two quarterbacks for ETSU this year out for the season. Bucks using their fifth string quarterback here the last couple of weeks at William Riddle. Third down and 10 for the Bucks at the Furman 32, and we have a timeout taken by the Buccaneers. And we'll take it as well. 7.01 to go here in the third quarter. Furman by six on ESPN Plus. Back here in Furman and Cole, how about this current drive by East Tennessee State? I mean, they are just taking it to the Palins right now, and all they're doing is just taking it, taking it, and taking it. So kudos to Coach Quarles. I mean, not much to really work with in the skill position. A lot of great players are out injured, but they're finding ways to move the football against a really good defense that contained Western Carolina last weekend. So this is kind of shocking to watch the Palins not play up to their level. You know, not discouraging, but a little bit disappointing. Third and ten, Riddle flush from the pocket. Here comes the pressure, throws on the run, passes, almost intercepted. It's incomplete. Micah Robinson had it in the bread basket, and he couldn't hold it in. It brings up fourth down. It does bring up fourth down. However, there is a flag on the field, and I'm curious to see what the officials are going to call. Holding on ETSU. Offense, number 78. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. We played third down. And that's holding on Chris Everhard, number 78, for the box. Yeah. Good job. Kind of accepting that penalty, just continue to drive that back. But let's look here. Right there, you see that hand. He's reaching out there. And then right there, Mike Robinson, he kind of, you're trailing him, you're in man, and you're winning the route, running it with him. Basically almost in phase right there on that coverage and then just drops it. I mean, come on, brother. You got to catch the football. Had he made the catch on the interception, that would have been his first pick made of the season. So now third down and 20 for the Buccaneers. And they run it up the middle. Trey Foster and still on his feet. And all the way out to the 26-yard line. Good run. 
right, is this field goal time? It looks like it is for the Bucs. Hey, that was a heck of a play call right there going inside zone, really split inside zone right there. You have the tight end kick out the edge rusher coming off the left side of the um, field. And then right there, just not giving up on the play, you know, ran into his blocker, bounced off of that, got some more yards, and now you're putting your, your team in a great situation to get three points on the board. A 43-yard field goal for Ewan Johnson. He is 7 of 10 this year on field goals, his longest of the year, 44. And the kick is blocked. It's blocked and picked up by Hugh Ryan of Furman. And Ryan is tackled out of bounds at the 45. So a blocked punt by the Furman defense, denying ETSU a chance to get on the board with three. We have not seen that so far all season from that special teams unit. Last year, the Palins were blocking kicks left and right, and here we go with a block right there. Key for that team. And here we are when we come back soon. It'll be Palin football. It'll get that hand up and blocks it. Hugh Ryan gets a little bit of a return, and now the Palins is getting ready to move down, ball on the 45-yard line. So Jack Barton has a sack and a blocked field goal. Now Paladins have the ball. Huff going deep and has a man open. It's Colton Hinton inside the 15, and he's banged out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. First down, and what a catch by Colton Hinton on the right side of the field. And there goes that explosive play. That There it is right there. Colton Hinton, the freshman, getting downfield right there, wide open. Nobody's near him. Really good catch on the ball, and then also getting a little bit extra yards out of it. Good fake right there. And for the first time in a long time in this game, Furman inside the red zone. It has a six-point lead. Touchdowns, none to be scored yet by either team. Points have been hard to come by for both teams. They've come at a premium here tonight. And the handoff to Dominic Roberto. Roberto inside the 10, and might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Yeah, but I kind of want to talk a little bit more about that previous play right there, just for a quick second. I mean, you look at Colton Hinton, runs that corner route, kind of gives a good jab step on the inside, and that's what fools that safety to want to kind of cover more towards the middle of the field, and then just escapes outwards towards the corner of the, towards the end zone. I mean, that that's just beautiful route running from a freshman. He's playing out of his mind all year, and he's not playing like he's just a freshman. He's playing like he's been doing this for a while. And the give to Roberto again inside the five, and he goes down to the four-yard line, brings up third down and goal. And a huge play here for both teams. And but first, the penalty flag is on the play. So negate that play. Illegal procedure and formation, I should say, on firm. Yeah, that's a focus penalty right there. I mean, you can't have mistakes like that. And it looks like maybe the right guard was a little bit further back than what he should should have been right there, EJ Wilson. <laughs> Second to goal from the 15, and a quick handoff, and then getting tripped up is Dominic Roberto. Not sure if he tripped over his own teammate or another guy. He's down to the 14, now third down and goal for the Paladins. Inside, four minutes to go in the third, and Furman leads it by two field goals. And I think we just got to give credit where credit's due right there. I mean, that was just a great job by number 27, just coming in and blowing that play up in the backfield, and then just make, having that tackle for loss. Third and goal for Furman at the ETSU 14. As Huff will take it himself, throws on the run, passes out of bounds, incomplete. He was looking for Colton Hinton, who made a great catch earlier in this drive. And now it's fourth down, and the field goal unit coming out again. And I know this is frustrating as an offensive person. It is so frustrating when you have to end drives and field goals and nine touchdowns and extra points it is the most frustrating thing ever Especially if you know your offense is extremely talented and the things and the capabilities of what you can do it, It's frustrating. So it, it's, it's a little bit concerning But again, it's not discouraging but again kudos to ETSU. They're playing 
some great football on defense. 32 yard try from Ian Williams, plenty of distance, it is good. And Ian Williams has scored every point in this game. He is three for three on field goal tries. Nine nothing Furman, we're back after this on ESPN Plus. Back here in Greenville, South Carolina, here's a look at the Furman scoring drive. Five plays, 41 yards, less than three minutes of time off the clock. And it started all because of that blocked field goal that it had by Jack Barton blocking the ETSU field goal try. Big swing of momentum there. Yeah, it was. I mean, you can see it right there. I mean, offense finally got something going and then just didn't finish in the red zone, which is, again, unusual for that Palin offense. They typically have one trip into the red zone where they don't score a touchdown or anything like that. But to have three straight and like that is, again, interesting, a little bit weird. A chance to cut that six-point lead in half instead turns into a nine-point bulge here by Furman in the third quarter. So we talked about it. It's a teacher versus pupil in the head coaching category today. Clay Hendricks, the head coach at Furman. Against George Quarles of ETSU. George Quarles used to be the offensive coordinator here under Clay Hendricks a few years ago. You played for both head coaches here at Furman. Can you compare and contrast their personalities and their <laughs> coaching philosophies? Uh, that's a good question. Um, Coach Hendricks is a, a lot more, um, you know, he's very direct with what, what he wants and what he wants to see. And um, Coach Hendricks was very involved with the offensive line, which is what I played. So. Uh, Coach Quarles, he's more kind of loose. He'll joke with you. He'll laugh with you. Um, kind of more of a player's coach in a way to kind of describe that. So that's the best way I can describe the both of them, uh, contrasting them. But comparing them, I mean, they're both stellar masterminds when it comes to offense. Uh, Coach Quarles and Coach Hendricks overlapped by one year here in the 80s, 1985. Quarles was a freshman that year. Hendricks was a senior. Room together for one year on the road as roommates. Eventually became coaches on the same staff here at Furman. And now it's teacher versus the pupil. And right now the teacher has a nine point lead, but Furman's had to work for every point it's had. And honestly, you don't want any other way if you're the, the Buccaneers. You want them to earn every single yard that they want to have. You want to make life difficult. You know, you don't want to back down from the challenge just because you're ranked third in the country. That doesn't mean anything when those helmets get strapped on. Third down and five for the Buccaneers. Riddle throws, and that is intercepted by Micah Robinson. His first interception of the season. A huge takeaway for the Paladin defense. Yeah, it was about time he finally got one. He dropped one earlier, gets, the, gets one this time around. You can see Coach Quarles is kind of like, what, what was that? But what happened there is pretty simple. We look at the quarterback right here. You know where he wants to go. He's eyeing his receiver, and Michael Robinson just follows those eyes where he's staring them down, and then he just makes a play on the football. That's just really good defensive back IQ right there and just doing what you're coached to do and following through, and there you go. You get rewarded with a, with a turnover. It is the 15th Furman takeaway this season, the 44th takeaway by Furman over the last 21 games. That is doing some damage in the takeaway department for this Furman defense. Huff, a little inside screen to Colton Hinton, almost lost it. He juggled it and finally hauled it in, and he gains a couple of yards in the play. Yeah, and then you saw off the edge, you saw him, Huff had pressure, and he was getting ready to get popped. But again, just talking a little bit about that turnover, and before we get there, we'll talk about this real quick. Right there, you saw the... Really good read off of it, just knowing where the blocks are coming and just following the flow out the offensive line. And you saw the defender come right off of that and make a play. But I mean, to be minus three in turnovers and only have nine points is it's not good. Wayne Anderson gets the carry. Number nine in purple has the first down, stays on his feet inside the 30, all the way down to the 26 yard line. And that's enough for a Furman first down. And there you see there's lightning. Thunder had a lot of the reps kind of throughout the game and now you see lightning finally strike a little bit with Wayne Anderson really good job just following his blockers getting vertical up the field using a little bit of that speed and there you go first down Paladins looking for their first touchdown of the game just three field goals by Ian Williams and that's it little toss play to Wayne Anderson tries to turn the corner and he's forced out of bounds inside the 25 down to the 22 
inside 90 seconds to go here in the third quarter. A much closer game than people anticipated coming into today. Furman, 6-1, 4-0 in the league, and number three rated in the country in the FCS. ETSU banged up, lots of injuries. Two and five on the season, and just one and three in SOCON play. Second down and six. And Huff. Flush from the pocket, being chased, running for his life, throws on the run, and that is almost intercepted. It was intercepted, but out of bounds. Caught by Sheldon Arnold, the safety, but he's out of bounds. Dangerous throw by Huff, and it's incomplete. Really good job just generating pressure here. I mean, we look at the replay. I mean, guys are just chasing them down. I mean, just finding ways just to stay after Huff. You can tell they got a guy manned on him. Whenever he gets out the pocket, they're triggering those linebackers to go get after him and don't let him get free. Don't let him get loose and get some positive yardage. Third down and six. And Huff inside pass to Joshua Harris inside the 10, inside the five, into the end zone. Touchdown, Furman. Joshua Harris, his second touchdown reception of the season. And there it is, that tunnel screen. It shows up every single game. And they've been having some big plays with that play the whole time this game, Brock. And there you see it right there with Josh Harris. Really good job. Can we see the replay here in the set? We're going to see the way he just delivered the ball. Really good blocking on the outside, out there in the perimeter, in space, offensive linemen getting on their guys. And then Josh Harris makes a little cut on the safety out there in space and then just opens them up for an easy score. Extra point is good. Tyler Huff with the touchdown pass, his ninth of the season for Furman, the 24th in his Paladin career. With 46 seconds remaining in the third quarter, finally the Furman offense responding, getting its first touchdown of the day after three field goals by Ian Williams. Now a touchdown pass from Huff to Joshua Harris to make it a full two-score game, 16-0 here, late third quarter. Well, it, it took a while, but you know, it, it just, it all starts with just building just a little bit, a little momentum. You have some big plays, and then next thing you know, you start to create that belief that you can get it done in the end zone. You finally see Furman finish a drive in the end zone. You know, it, it's 16 points to zero. I mean, again, no one would have expected this game to kind of flow the way it's been flowing so far, but now we're starting to see that Palin offense starting to gel a little bit. And right now, ETSU on offense, they got to just run the football, find ways to just create some plays where your running backs are getting space and you got to execute up front when it comes to blocking assignments. And this will be a... Bounces at the one-yard line is picked up. Uh-oh. Dangerous pickup by the ETSU Bucks. It looked like they thought it was going to go out into the end zone. It just kind of stopped at the one-yard line. That's a free ball. <laughs> And he can't fair catch it after that, so he just went and got it as he needed to at the one and got a couple of yards out of it. Tell you what, Ian Williams, I mean, that's a good kick on the ball right there, too. He just bounced back. That's just some pretty good luck right there. And I know he was shocked, but still, I mean, hey, heck of a play right there, you know, for, by the Paladin special teams. I mean, pinning them right there, and now your defense is in a good spot. ETSU has to drive, what, about 97 yards down the field? And under center is William Riddle, deep in his own territory. They hand the ball off to Amir Dindy. And correction is Trey Foster. Trey Foster has a first down and more. There you have it, Cole. You said it. Has to establish the running game again. It's doing it here late in the third quarter. Big down, big first down run for Trey Foster. Yep, you said it right there, Buck. Trey Foster just finding that hole. I mean, it didn't look like it was going to be much. And then he just finds a little bit of a crease. And then he's off to the races. Looks like they ran stretch on that play right there. Just kind of a little bit of an outside run. Just want to get his running back going. And who would have thought that would have freed up enough room to get down to the 25-yard line? That will be the last play of the third quarter. After three, Furman, a full two-touchdown lead. Two-score lead, 16-0 Paladins back for the fourth quarter. After this on ESPN+. Plus. Run again. So you see it, 21 personnel. And then we look right here. You see, the best thing about this, Brock, even though everything's going there, the tackle does such a great job making that cut block on that defender for the running back just to cut it straight up right there. Watch this. He's going to make one guy miss, and then he's off to the races. Now, you run into the referee. I mean, you kind of <laughs> screw yourself right there. But still, that's a great run right there, and that's exactly what the Bucks got to keep doing, running the football because they have not failed yet doing that.
Yeah, technically the officials are part of the field, but if the official wasn't there, he might have gone a lot farther down the field, if not all the way for a touchdown. Start of the fourth quarter, Riddle will throw it down the sideline, and that's incomplete. Looked like a little miscommunication there, looking for Xavier Geyer, that's number 19 in white for the Bucks. Incomplete pass, brings up second down in 10, and you gotta think, Cole, for ETSU, this is a must score drive a must touchdown score drive here at this point of the game yeah you're gonna be trying to have some plays where your receivers had double moves and right there it was actually a double move by that receiver you saw he kind of stopped right there he's hoping that safety was going to bite on that stop and then he decided to go in that go route but still really good job by Cam Brisson staying in coverage on that play second down and 10 riddle he'll step up in the pocket here comes the rush pressure coming pressure coming and he uh Gains a couple of yards forward, no sack on the play. Gains a couple of yards up to the 27. And that brings up third down and eight. You see it right there. Good job by Jack Barton coming around the edge right here. Really good move. You saw that. So right there, that's what we call a little bit of a bull and pull right there. So he runs to the defender, grabs his jersey. That's not the defender, excuse me. The offensive tackle pulls his jersey and then pulls him. Then he gets around that edge. And then really good job by just staying in pursuit of the ball, staying with the back and makes a great tackle right there. Third down and eight. Must reach the 35 with the first down. Riddle steps up in the pocket, throws incomplete. As he was looking for Trey Foster out of the backfield, and now that brings up fourth down, the punting unit will come onto the field. Okay, really good job by this pal in defense. You're starting to see them dialing up the pressures. And now that's forcing some bad balls coming out of the quarterback's hand. And saw that a little bit underthrown. Makes it really hard for that receiver to catch the ball. And now here we are, fourth and eight. Paladins getting ready to get the ball back. So Nate Brackett will kick it again. Joshua Harris deep for Furman at his own 30. As Brackett... Kind of a line drive, yet spiraling kick, and takes a bounce inside the 30, takes another roll for ETSU inside the 30 down at the 28-yard line. And a timeout on the field. Early fourth quarter, 16-0 Furman on ESPN+. Plus. There's a look at the uh, Paladins' upcoming schedule. Next weekend, it goes on the road at Chattanooga. Cole and I, you and I will be here in two weeks on November 11th against VMI, and then... Paladins conclude the regular season on the road at rival Wofford to conclude the regular season. Yeah, I mean, kind of look at the SoCon uh, scoreboard right now. I mean, uh, VMI is playing some really good football, and they may have a chance to beat Chattanooga at home. Little jet sweep, a little toss to Colton Hinton. And Cole Furman with a two-touchdown lead and plus a two-two-point conversion lead, so a full... Two score game, 16 points up, early fourth, run the football here to use, use some clock, is that right? Yeah, you want to continue to use that clock. I mean, you know, the Paladins actually came into this game, they were going to dress, they dressed 106 players today. Ooh. So you can tell kind of where their mindset was going, and kudos to ETSU for not falling for that trap. I mean, this kind of became a trap game really from the beginning of the game. And a good defense here by ETSU. Dominic Roberta goes down, a loss in the play. Now brings up third down and long. Approaching 13 minutes to go in the game. Furman leads by 16. Yeah, you want to see them get a little bit more consistent in the run game. They haven't really been executing to a high level. They've had some, some runs just kind of pop. And Coach Hendricks, he wanted more explosive plays. And they've had some explosive plays, but at the same time, it hasn't been consistent. And you want to build that consistency when you get ready to go play a really good football team, which could be, quote, unquote, the SoCon Championship next weekend. Third and 14, Huff, inside pass to Joshua Harris. He goes nowhere. Good stop by the ETSU Buccaneers defense, and that forces fourth down coming up and a punt upcoming for Furman. I guess somebody turned on the recognition level now because here we go, the tunnel screen once again. And now the defenders, they just jump on it and make a really good tackle. They don't allow a big gain after the catch. And now, I mean, I kind of talked to some of their players. I talked to some of the coaches yesterday and kind of leaning up to this game they said they simplified the playbook going into this game they just wanted to execute their stuff and a blocked punt by the buccaneers is picked up by tonquez ball and he's in the end zone for a 
Returns, scoop and score six. Wow. Tonquez, ball number 24, blocked it, scooped it up and ran it in for six and a chance to cut that 16 point lead in half here if it goes for the two point conversion. That is a huge play right there. And that is a special teams mistake that the Palace usually don't make right there, Brock. And here's the replay here. Oh, that's great. That's just a great job coming in to block a punt. Actually, it was blocked by number 27. Teddy Wilson picked up and returned into the end zone by Tonquez Ball. The blocked kick six. And we get a timeout. 11.58 to go here in the game. 16-point lead down to 10 on ESPN+. Plus. Here we go. Really good special teams play right here. They just brought more than what they had to block. And you see it just really good job just not lunging forward towards the kicker to, or the punter to block the ball, but just getting your hands up coming in for the ball and just scooping and scoring right here. And now the Bucks, they're going to go for two. And I don't blame them. You're only down eight points if you get this two-point conversion. And then you're looking at a really different ball game in terms of how hard the Buccaneers are going to start playing. A chance to cut that 16-point deficit in half here with a two-point conversion try. As Riddle is in the shotgun, throws it into the end zone, passes, cut for two points. Xavier Geyerdetz hauls it in, and the Bucks on special teams, plus a two-point conversion, cut a two-score game in half. It's now 16 to eight. Man, that was just a really good job by the receiver right there. Really in good coverage. Michael Robinson was in a great position to make a play on the ball, but the receiver just kind of swims over him and then makes the play, just goes in for the catch. At that point, I mean, you just got to be able to play the football right there. And Michael Robinson, you can't be looking for a penalty flag at that moment. You just got to play the receiver no matter what. You just get a hand up, do something. And right there. And Riddle, he was in a bad position. It was a bad, I mean, the ball was kind of bad. It was wobbly. And right there, that's just a receiver having some heart and just doing his job, going the extra mile to make that play. So hats off to him, and here we are with an eight-point ball game. How will the Paladin offense respond? It's a new ball game. I mean, it, yeah. was, it was 16 points, and now it's down to eight on two different plays, cutting it in half. The blocked punch returned for six by ETSU, the two-point conversion, 16-8, one-score game, and ETSU is back in this game on homecoming Saturday here in Furman, in Greenville, South Carolina, home of the Furman Paladins, as Anderson brings it out, barely past the 20, out to around the 21. Yeah, and Brock, I mean, this kind of takes me back to a, a long, you know, a, a saying that came about maybe a couple years ago from Geno Smith. They tried to write me off, and I didn't write back. And that's exactly what the Buccaneers are feeling right now. As we look at their remaining schedule, got VMI playing a tight game against Chattanooga next week. Western Carolina, they're losing to Mercer. And then you finish it off with the Citadel, who has struggled all season. So winnable three games if, you know, the pace continues. But I'm really impressed with the way this Buccaneer team has been playing. It's a Buccaneers team that lost at Austin P by 60 points, 63 to 3. And also lost at Chattanooga, its rival last Saturday, 34-3. Points have been hard to come by for this offense this year. Lots of injuries, lots of inconsistency, a youthful offensive line. It held its own in the first half against Furman today, only down six at halftime, got down 10, make it a 16 in the third quarter. Now here in the fourth, only down eight. Furman football, they give it to Dominic Roberto. They've called his number a lot today. Gains a few out to the 34. If you're George Quarles, you gotta like the way his team has responded after such a frustrating start of the season, a frustrating loss on the road at Chattanooga last week. Hanging in there with the third-ranked team of the country in the FCS. Yeah, and while this team has struggled a lot offensively, I mean, you got to admire the fight that they have. I mean, those points didn't come from the offense, came from special teams just doing their thing and Again, that's all you need. You just need a little bit of hope, and that'll take you a long way. Luke Shufflett, Mr. Reliable, receiving-wise for Furman, and that'll move the chains. Do you think that Coach Quarles may have a little advantage other than most coaches do because he maybe knows how Coach Hendricks thinks? 
Maybe a little bit of that, but I also think that you kind of know how to game plan against some of the players that you coach. And you think about it, Coach Quarles has actually had, he's been here for all five of those starting offensive linemen that are out there on the, on the field right now. So he knows how good they are. He knows their tendencies. He knows those type of things. So he can add on the pressure. He knows what they're weak at. And you can see it here. Just knows, you know, when to call those plays. And then Sheldon Arnold, he's been outstanding. I mean, he's just one of those guys that continues to show, show up. Game in, game out. I mean, just really impressive. I mean, feel still midseason All-American. And his PFF score after eight weeks so far, it's an 88. That's pretty high. I think that's top five out of every single safety in the FCS. Huff, quick throw to the flat, finds Ben Ferguson. Haven't heard his name too much today. Ferguson makes the catch. Clock running, 9.40 to go in the game. Furman up eight, a full touchdown lead. And right now the clock is Furman's friend. And then here we go again, just a little bit of 11 personnel. That's something they love to be in right there. And they've been attacking the flats a lot because those DBs are playing so far off the receiver. They feel like they can at least get maybe three, two, three, four yards off of those plays. And that puts them a little bit more favorable, favorable position as they continue to move the ball throughout the series. Anderson and Roberto surround Huff. Huff has to roll out throws on the run just simply throws it away incomplete and it brings up fourth down you can see a little bit of the difference out there just not great blocking on the play action pass you saw offensive linemen kind of sprawled out on the ground i mean it's, it's just been a lot of struggles on this offense we know that they're so capable of much more and it, it's a little bit discouraging when you see them underperform and actually, I'll take that back. It's not discouraging. It's disappointing to see them underperform to what we've seen last week and to see what we saw the week beforehand and weeks prior to that. They have the talent, and they got to be more consistent with executing every time they play another team. And this time, a quick kick by Furman. No blocked kick this time by ETSU. It hauls it in at the 10, and we get a timeout of the field. 8.56 to go. We got a ball game here. Furman leads it by eight here on ESPN+. Plus. Here in Greenville, here's a look at the game summary, and it was the ETSU special teams blocked punt for a touchdown that's made this game interesting. Yeah, I mean, you just look at this game. I mean, Furman's offensive, what it averaged throughout the season, 394 yards, almost 400. Today, barely 300. And if it wasn't for that big pass to Colton Henson, I don't even think they'd be that far up in there. And then you look at the third down percentage, they averaged almost 50% on third downs. Today, they're 28%, Brock. That is completely uncharacteristic of this offense. From the 13-yard line, ETSU in its own territory, first and 10. They run the football. Trey Foster banging off Paladins, and he has, looks like the first down. It is a 10-yard run. They'll move the chains. There we go. Just a little bit again of that duo run. One more time. Keep running it. If it keeps working for you, they're finding those in those gap schemes, and they're just getting those guys moving off the ball, just clearing guys out the way, and these running backs are finding ways to get vertical and create some positive yardage. New set of downs for the Bucks. first down and 10. And Riddle, Trey Foster again. Boy, he's been very active today, getting a lot of big runs. He gets hit up at the 26-yard line. He goes down there and breaks down second down. Well, Bucks go 21 personnel here to go outside zone, go for a stretch run here. Then good job by the Paladin defense, getting those linebackers in those gaps, sitting in there, waiting to make a play, and then there it is. Prevent the big play, keep them to a short game, second and seven. Amir Dindy in there to the right of quarterback William Riddle. Trips receivers to the right, and a handoff to Dindy breaks the tackle. Oh, he almost broke it all the way down to the other end of the field. He was wrestled down just past the 35 at the 36. Yep, they're going to stay in that 11 personnel look, and then they just go for a quick insert. Inside run right here. They're going to run towards the tight end, just inside zone, and then he just breaks it back. Actually, that's more of the duo run right there. Riddle, quick throw, pass is caught. And that's caught by Quinn Caballero, the wide receiver, number 85 in white. Six foot 181 senior from the bar, Florida. Used to get, again, used to play at Charleston Southern in the Big South back in the day. So now you see it right here. Furman now stepping up into the line of scrimmage now because the run is officially a threat. 
And now it's making it William Riddle's job a little bit easier for him to throw the football in these RPOs and play actions. I would expect the big play to come sooner or, or later. And Foster stumbles and then gets gang tackled. Matt Sachovka, number seven, along with Jack Barton, number 93. They take him down. And no, no game of the play. So, yeah, you see it here. I mean, Jack Barton just kind of knifes in and trips up the offensive tackle, and then he just kind of pushes him back. And then Matthew Sachoka does a great job winning his one-on-one -on -one in the interior. And that's what happens right there. You got two guys doing what they need to do, and that creates that, that loss of yardage right there. Now you have a third and six. Obviously, this has to be a passing down. I don't foresee Coach Borles wanting to run the football here, just given what's going on in this situation. Third down and six. Must reach the 46 to keep the drive going. Riddle throws incomplete. He was looking for Xavier Geyer. That's number 19. He was double covered on the play. That brings up fourth down. The kicking unit will come out. So the Palace brought some pressure on that play right there. So you can see it right here. They're going to loop in Alex Mayer, the best pass rusher out there. I would have kept them on the outside, just let them get up field. But still, great pressure look. And then just really good coverage on the backside. You kind of see Hugh Ryan, and then you see the corner come in and crash down to force that incompletion. Really good job by that Paladin defense stopping ETSU. Nate Brackett to punt it away. Booming. Huge kick. Lands at the five-yard line. Rolls inside the five, and it'll be down at the one-foot line. Perfect execution by the ETSU special teams unit. Well, well, well. I mean, you saw the Palins had that same type of luck on the kickoff, and now the Bucks have it on a punt. I mean, specialists right now are having a pretty good day, and here it is right here. It's going to be really interesting to watch this Palin offense drive about 99 yards down the field. We can't wait to see this when we come back. We're back in Greenville, 16-8. Furman in the lead here by eight in the fourth quarter, 5.45 to go, and Furman is at its one foot line, first and 10, inside its own one here late in the game. Try to get him off sides right there to get five yards to make it a little bit easier. The running backs are Roberto and Hicks, and inside handoff. And Getting out of the end zone, a little more breathing room is Dominic Roberto. And uh, he's out to the three, a gain of two and a half. Again, like you said, Bob, just a little bit more breathing room. That's all you really need right now. Now you can kind of get more into your play calling bag here if you're Justin Roper. And you're going to keep Mayon Hicks out there. And he's been an amazing blocker for Dominic Roberto in previous weeks. So hopefully he can kind of get him out there in space. Uh, miscommunication between Huff and Roberto, and Huff makes uh, something out of nothing, a freelance play, and he gains a few yards. He's out to the eight. Hey, when you got a quarterback like Tyler Huff, sometimes you can afford to have those mistakes, but then you got to be able to capitalize on it, too. And then Tyler Huff is an amazing quarterback in terms of his ability to just be a dual threat guy. Gets up field and really good tackle by number seven right there to prevent a big game. Talk to Coach Clay Hendricks before the game. He said one thing that makes Tyler Huff a winner is his toughness along with his leadership. Young man who was second lieutenant to the ROTC, Army National Reserves. He throws it away incomplete and a three and out by Furman here in the fourth quarter, up eight, 4.37 to go. And the punting unit comes on, and two punts ago, Ryan Levy had one blocked that was returned for six, plus the two-point conversion by ETSU to cut that 16-point lead in half. I would hold my breath right here. And he gets it away. Geyer Detz returns it from his from the 50-yard uh, line, and Geyer Detz, pretty good field position here for ETSU. Down one score, plus a two-point conversion. And 4.27 to go, and here we go. Crunch time here for both teams. Yeah, you got to see who's going to step up to the play. Will ETSU's offense, when they start to get going, will they continue to push the ball down the field? Are they going to run the football, go some more stretch, outside zone, and maybe get that RPO a little bit more engaged? Just make, your, make the job easier for William Riddle. You don't want him to cause a turnover. You don't want to put the game necessarily in his hands. If I'm Coach Quarles, I'm putting the game in the hands of my backs. 
Let those guys be the bell cow. Let them get the, get us this win. Riddle, handoff up the middle. And uh, Bryson Irby, correction, it's uh, number 17, Trey Foster. Trey Foster getting the carry. He's a guy that was uh, promoted from deep in the depth chart to basically second string running back, and he's been very effective here today. Well, I mean, that's what happens. You have a lot of injuries, and you got guys that are out right now. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of Boris. We haven't seen a lot of Bryson Irby in this game since maybe the first series or really the first half. They've been kind of spreading that ball around, and 17, he's been kind of the bell cow. Second and 10, and Foster stays on his feet. Jack Barton and a few other paladins take him down. He's inside the 40. He's down to the 39. Now brings up third down, a critical third down here for ETSU. Down eight, 3.30 to go. Yep, and then right here, just given where they're at on the field. If we're going with a third and five, I expect maybe an RPO, just something to kind of target the flats and see if these Paladin corners are if they're going to play and give them a little bit of a comfort in the zone, play soft zone here or not, or are they going to step up, play man, and lock up some of these receivers. Third down, five yards to go for East Tennessee State. Riddle over the middle, pass is incomplete. No flags on the play. There was contact, no flag thrown, and now it's fourth down. Yeah, right there, that was a man play right there. Man coverage by the defense. They brought a corner blitz from the boundary on the op opposite side right there. Really good job just kind of staying in coverage. Those safeties following those receivers, handling their responsibilities. And there you go with an incompletion on third down. Now you're looking at a fourth and five. Timeout is taken inside three minutes to go in the game. 16 8. Not your typical score you're used to seeing here in uh, college football. No, you're, you're not used to seeing a, a, you know, a game like this, especially when the team is ranked so high and they're, again, you're underperforming, you know, compared to how you usually would perform. And honestly, the Palace have not been great at home when you look at who they played recently. I mean, the Citadel, that game was a lot closer than what it should have been. And now you look at this game here against ETSU, a lot closer than what it should be right now. And what will ETSU dial up here? Fourth down and five at the Paladin 39-yard line. Riddle being pressured. He throws. It's incomplete. And a turnover on downs for ETSU, and the Paladins get the football back with 2.49 to go and an eight-point lead. And there you go. That's that pressure package right there. So let's look at it right here. Good job. So Braden Gilby, he's going to trigger because he's seeing what the guards are doing. He's reading the V. They call that a V blitz, V-O-G. They're reading that guard, and whatever that guard does, Braden Gilby's going to read and react off of that. So he's going to come and blitz, and that's what causes that pile in the middle. And then everything just started collapsing, and then next thing you know, William Riddle's in a bad situation. He tries to get the ball out, but they're going to rule that as dead. And that's a huge play right there for that Paladin offense to get back on the field and drain this clock out with two minutes and 49 seconds left. And the Buccaneers have one timeout remaining. Furman has all three remaining if it chooses to use one. Furman football, first and 10 at their own 46. And Huff will hand it off. Roberto. Gains a couple up to the 49. And the final timeout of the game for ETSU taken right here, 242 to go. So as much as we want to say that offensively, you know, we this was a very disappointing performance from Herman, you know, not to the standard that you know we had to go see the replay of last week's game, you know, on YouTube from for that situation. And then you look at the Citadel we look at the Sanford week, offense started to come alive late. You look at the Citadel week. Offense start to come alive late. They haven't been consistent with starting fast. I think last week was probably the first game where I've seen this Paladin offense actually start fast and attack really all season. So going into next week's game, they got to be able to start fast. I think if they start fast and they finish fast, similar to what they did last weekend, I think you kind of coast throughout the rest of the conference, especially if VMI pulls off an upset against Chattanooga today.
So no more timeouts left by ETSU. Furman football, second down and seven coming up, 2.42 to go. Furman looking to go to 5-0 and in league play for the first time since 2006. Time now for the Pepser player of the game. It is Joshua Harris. You see his numbers, eight catches, 78 yards, one critical touchdown for Furman. He is our Pepsi player of the game. They hand the ball up to Dominic Roberto and gains a few more yards inside the 50, down to the 46 of ETSU territory, and the Bucks can no longer stop the clock down eight. Yeah, this is the best part about being on offense. You kind of go into that four-minute mode right here. You just let the clock drain. You just get it down to where it's maybe about 10 seconds. Then you finally get set. You call your play with maybe about a couple seconds left, and then you just go from there. This is the type of situation that a lot of, a lot of offenses love to be in. And then, Brock, too, another thing to note, I mean, this may have been the – not the cleanest performance by this offense, but still being able to do what they did today and continue to find ways to be successful and kudos to the Palin defense for causing three turnovers. So Furman takes a timeout after running down the play clock all the way down to one. Inside two minutes to go in the game. A critical third down and two coming up here for both teams. If uh, Furman gets the first down, they could just run out the clock and the game is over. ETSU has no more timeouts left. If ETSU can get a stop, it, uh, it'll have a chance, but uh, a very slim one, unless it could get a turnover right here and a quick score. And then the two-point conversion to tie the game, but then everything has to go right for that to happen for ETSU. That's a lot of situations that where it, all you can do, all you have to do right here is just get the first down. You get the first down. You get into my favorite formation, which is victory formation, but they're going to bring the house here. Here we go, third down and two, handoff, Roberto, and is he second effort? Yes, a second effort and a little push from his teammates gets him the first down, and that should start to wrap it up here for Furman. Clock running now inside of 145 to go. ETSU, no timeouts remaining. Furman up eight. And a couple of more plays here, and this game will be it. Yeah, it was a, one of those games where you you come in, you think that you're going to blow a team out, and next thing you know, you're in a dogfight. I mean, again, this Palin team has not played great at home yet all season, besides Tennessee Tech. But still, just hasn't, haven't started fast. I just want to see these guys start fast. You're going to be the top three team in the country. you got to start fast. you got to be able to take out teams that – aren't to your level and you can't play down to their level. I mean, there's no knock against ETSU. This is a beat up football team on offense. I, I think Ty, if Tyler Rydell was able to go, Will Huzzy was able to go. This is a completely different ball game. And uh, honestly, ETSU would have probably got the upset if those two guys are available to go. However, again, this goes with what I say about the Paladins. They play to the level of their opponent. So, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a lot of hypotheticals. But this was not the best game that I thought a number three team should have. One more deal down for Furman, and that'll be it for the game. And there it is, the kneel down by Huff, and that'll be the final play of the game as the teacher versus pupil matchup is over, and the teacher gets the better of the student here today. Furman wins it 16 to 8. Furman is now one six straight. It goes to seven and one overall. It goes to five and zero oh in the SoCon. Five and zero oh start in the SoCon. The first time that's been done by Furman since 2006. ETSU drops to two and six on the year and one and four in conference play.